Welcome to Science Sci-Fi, connecting the public to science and technology through storytelling. My name is Ronald Friedman. I'm a science fiction writer. Later this month, the SLS, the Space Launch System, NASA's next moon rocket, will be launched for the first time in his first demo mission. Seeing this mega mock rocket launch from Cape Kennedy will be an awe-inspiring sight. But the SLS has limitations. One of them that it can only fly once per year. In this video, we will explore how NASA can launch additional mission to the moon. Stay tuned. Artemis without SLS. Artemis is NASA's next project to launch people and land astronauts on the moon for the first time in 50 years. We're going to review what is the current project and how we can add more missions if uh, this is what NASA wants to do, at perhaps even at a lower cost. What are the agenda? First, we are going to review the current program, the current plan for NASA to launch people to the moon, the Artemis program. Then we are going to discuss why the SLS perhaps not suitable for many missions. It could only do maybe one mission a year. Then we're going to talk about some of the fun stuff like Delta V and rocket equation and how we can come to the next conclusion, which is how we can add more mission to Artemis without the SLS. Now, I'm not saying we should cancel the SLS, but if NASA wish so, we can add additional missions. So, how is the current Artemis program is going to work? First, we have an uncrewed Starship HLS, that's a SpaceX big spacecraft, going to the moon lander, and it's going to be launched from Earth to Earth orbit. Then SpaceX is going to send additional tanker to refill Starship HLS with uh, additional propellant because by the time it reach orbit, it's almost empty. It needs all the propellant just to reach orbit. After it's been fully refueled, Starship HLS will fly to cis lunar orbit. That's an orbit around the moon, but it's not on the same plan as Earth, but is uh, in 90 degrees uh, in a way that all the time it will be in contact with Earth, so it will not be on the dark side, behind the dark side, behind the moon, and with all of the, all of the radio signal to Earth. And also it's, it's an easy way to get to the pole. And of course the mission, uh, NASA's mission is to land close to the South Pole, which may have ice water that can be used for different purposes. So once the Starship SLS is in moon orbit, so it's Starship HLS, then SLS, the mega rocket, will be launched with RAN on top of it, uh, with ECHO, uh, and it will launch it in one shot all the way to the moon orbit. Then it will rendezvous either with Starship, which can land on the moon, or with a gateway uh, the, that's a space station around the moon alongside Starship. So Orion will rendezvous with Starship in lunar orbit. The crew will transfer from the Orion capsule to Starship, and Starship will land on the moon. After the astronaut will finish their mission on the moon, they will return to Starship HLS. Starship HLS will fly back to orbit, rendezvous with Orion or the Gateway, the space station. And at this point, uh, Starship will not have any propellant left. It will be empty of fuel. And um, so it could either be discarded or attached to the Gateway or do whatever with it, maybe refuel it and use it for additional missions. Uh, but there is no fuel to do anything else. And the crew now is back in the Orion and uh, and with the Orion, it will fly back and return to Earth. Here's another diagram that explains the same thing. Starship fly to orbit. Then we have a few, a few here uh, with the mouse, a few additional tankers that will go as well to orbit to fuel Starship. So it will be complete. Uh, all the propellant tank will be completely full. 
then Starship will fly to a moon orbit, then we'll have the SLS with Orion on top, will fly directly without stopping in orbit, in Earth orbit directly to the moon orbit, then it will meet with Starship, uh, the astronautal transfer to Starship, Starship will land on the moon, after the complete, uh, completion of the mission, Starship will go back to the moon orbit or rendezvous with Orion, the screw will go back to Orion, and Orion will fly back to Earth. That's the plan. Now, what are the advantages of the SLS? The SLS has a number of adv advantages. First of all, it will be certified to fly crew mission from Earth. That means the astronaut can go to the rockets, go to the Orion, while it will be on top of the SLS, and then it will blast and go to Earth directly to the moon from Earth. Uh, Starship, for example, it is assumed that it will take a few years and quite a lot of flight until it will be certified to launch people from Earth. Uh, so until then, we cannot launch people with Starship. Uh, addition, ad another advantage the SLS has, it has enough Delta V to go from Earth surface all the way to TLI. That's a moon translunar injection or even to the moon orbit without refueling on Earth orbit. So it is a more powerful rocket that can die, do more things at one shot rather than break it down and refueling and then continue. And additionally, once you are in the moon orbit and you fly back to Earth, if you fly directly to Earth and try to enter the atmosphere, the speed, or the, the velocity will be a lot higher than try to land from orbit. And when you go at a much higher velocity, that means you will require something like 11 kilometers per second instead of 7.2 kilometers per second. With 11 kilometers per second, which is the return speed from Earth, you will need a very powerful uh, heat shield. So when the air breaks happens, the heat generated, you need a spacecraft that will be able to withstand this ship. No other ship can withstand that much heat uh, for a return from the moon mission. Uh, that is the idea why we need the Orion and the SLS. Why do I, am I arguing that the SLS is not sustainable? First, the SLS, the Space Launch System, is a super expensive system. And I think in May there was an estimation that each launch will cost the taxpayer $4.1 billion per launch. I wrote here only 4.1, I didn't say billion, but that's the price is in billions of dollars. It's super expensive and that's only for one launch. Additionally, the SLS is expendable, which means every time you want to fly it, you need to build a new rocket. That's why it's so expensive, but it also means you don't have a lot of them. And since it's burned after each flight, you no longer have it. So it will be limited to something like one flight a year, perhaps even less. As a result, it's very limited. Additionally, it can only carry four people in a mission, the one capsule. And you can see here on the schedule, we have one plan for 2022, it's a thermal mission, and, and crude, 2024, 2025, 2026, and 2027s. So that's roughly one mission a year. Now, what Artemis require in addition to SLS and Orion? We need a Starship SLS, which will be used as the lander that will go from the moon orbit to the surface and back from the surface to the moon. The Starship SLS will need to be capable of being launched from Earth because it's not being produced in space. So it needs to be launched from Earth. It needs to be refueled in Earth orbit because after it's in orbit, it no longer have any fuel or propellant left for going further to the moon. So it needs to be refueled probably five, maybe perhaps small mission. So that quite a lot of administration just to have it in moon orbit. Uh, orbit. So once it's refueled, uh, it needs to have a life support and it needs to be certified to carry astronaut in space and land on the moon with astronauts. And then 
once the refueled starship in, it's in low Earth orbit and it's ready enough for propellant to fly to the moon, rendezvous with Orion, which was launched by the SLS, or with another uh, spacecraft like the Gateway, the Lunar Gateway, and then it needs to land on the moon so the astronaut can complete the mission and fly back to the Gateway or to meet the Orion so the astronaut can return to Earth. Now we take away the Orion and the SLS from the equation. What components do we have left on uh, the Artemis program and how we can utilize them or perhaps other uh, things that we have in existence in order to complete additional moon system. So first, we're going to have a Starship HLS. This is a very powerful rocket. Uh, it may not be certified to launch human to space from Earth, at least for a few years. Maybe after uh, quite a lot number of flights, uh, Starship will be certified to fly to the moon, but we are under the assumption that at least in the first couple of years of the Artemis program, Starship can only fly humans while they're, while they're already in space, but not from Earth to space. Also, we're going to have a Starship HLS uh, that don't have enough propellant or rocket fuel. To, I'm, I'm calling propellant because it's not just rocket fuel, it's rocket fuel and oxygen. It doesn't have enough propellant to return from moon orbit back to Earth. That's a problem. Also, Starship cannot land on Earth, at least not the moon version. It doesn't have the heat shields, etc. But SpaceX has Dragon 2 and Falcon 9. This rocket and this capsule are certified to carry astronauts to Earth orbit, and it's also capable of returning astronauts from Earth orbit back to Earth. Uh, here on the right, by the way, we have the delta V in a diagram on how much delta V, the difference in velocity, we need in order to get to different places, uh, either in Mars or the Moon. We can use it a bit later for other calculations. Next, what are the advantages of Starship compared to the SLS? First of all, and foremost, is cost. According to Elon Musk, Starship launch may cost as little as $2 million. I'm not talking about $2 billion or $4.1 billion, but $2 million. It's not that much. So even if it, he's wrong and it will cost not $2 million, but $50 million per launch or even $100 million per launch, and we need 100 star, uh, sorry, and we need 10 Starship tanker to refuel it so it will have enough propellant to go to the moon, it will still be a lot cheaper than the SLS and the Orion uh, 4.1 million price tag. So it's going to be a lot cheaper. Additionally, unlike the SLS, Starship is 100% reusable and it's supposed to be rapid reusability. That means that once it lands, it could pretty quickly, maybe a few hours, maybe a few days, ready to be launched again. That means the, the spacecraft is, or the rocket is not being destroyed and we need to build a new one, we can reuse the same one. That's mean we are going to have a lot more mission. So not just one mission a year, we can have perhaps even hundreds of missions a year. I don't know, depends how many Starship, but maybe even more. So these are the two huge advantages, price and availability. So now, dram, 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 the proposal how we can do additional moon missions without uh, the SLS and the Orion. So I did here a color code. Yellow is component that is already part of the Artemis program, something that's already needed, already there. Green is something that is already available. It's not part of the Artemis, but it's available on the shelf, no need any special development. And the red is what is missing. So here is the proposal. First, we launch Starship uh, uh, HLS to orbit. That's exactly like before, before. Then, like the original uh, Artemis program. Then we are going to refuel the HLS uh, using the Starship tanker until it's fully refueled in Earth orbit. 
And here is the difference. Now, instead of launching it empty to the moon and then send the Orion to the, to the moon orbit to rendezvous with Starship, it will remain on Earth orbit. And we are going to launch the crew, the astronauts, uh, in the Dragon 2 capsule aboard the Falcon 9, which is already certified. They flew a, a few times. Uh, currently, NASA is charged 55 million dollars per seat, so that's 220 million dollars, still a lot cheaper than the SLS. It's going to rendezvous with a Starship, and the astronauts are going to be transferred to Starship. And later, when Starship is fully operational and it can go, can launch, be certified to launch astronaut from Mars, we won't even need that. But for now, let's go with it. Now, the astronaut on an Earth orbit inside the Starship HLS. Then the Starship will go to the moon, land, uh, which is what it's doing anyway, only that this time the astronaut will be aboard it. Then it will land on the moon, Astronaut will complete the mission and come back to Starship. And it will go back to the from the moon surface to moon orbit. This is something we already do. And here is the missing part, something that we need to solve. How the HLS will go back from the moon's orbit to Earth orbit so it can rendezvous with the Dragon 2. And then the astronaut can be transferred to the Dragon 2 and land safely on Earth from Earth orbit, which is not as difficult as going directly from the moon uh, to Earth orbit, which will require a special heat shield that the uh, Dragon 2 doesn't have. So here's the problem in order to use this program. How do we get the extra delta V for HLS to return from the moon, from the moon orbit back to Earth orbit? This is the big question. Here's another illustration of Starship HLS, that's the moon lander, that's the big rocket, meeting with the Orion, which is the currently certified rocket that the US has to launch asteroid, uh, asteroid to launch astronaut to space. Okay, rocket equation and delta V, I don't want to get too deeply into the math, but delta V is how much speed the, the rocket can go. So everything is relative, we know from Newton's law, and um, the most important thing in rocketry, how capable the rocket is, is or oh, one of the most important things is delta V. By how much it can go from what speed to what speed. The more fuel it has, it can go for a fast, it can have a bigger, faster, faster delta V. Less fuel it has, it can go a smaller. And the, the, the formula is that delta V, how much it could accelerate to, is VE, that's how, that's the full, the, if you have a rocket engine, rocket engine is uh, going in space by the, because we have fuel and oxygen burn and then they push out of the nozzle at a very high speed. Uh, the faster it go, then the faster the spacecraft can accelerate. So we want the VE, which is the speed of the uh, rocket exhaust, what's come out of the nozzle going as fast as possible. This one for the Raptor 2 engine that is used by Starship is 3.36 kilometer per second. That's the speed that the gas are coming out of the exhaust. M0, that's the initial mass of the fully fueled Starship. That's the spacecraft plus all the fuel and all the oxygen, all the propellant, plus all the payload. Payload is the cargo. So we have M0 and we have MF, that is the final spacecraft after it reached its destination uh, because as it accelerate, it burn fuel and burn oxygen and they are going out as a, and then the spacecraft become lighter and lighter and lighter uh, until eventually it run out of uh, rocket propellant. So M M final MF, that's the how the rocket is when it's empty. So it's just the shell, the engine, and the cargo, the payload. So based on this calculation, uh, I got that, uh, I, I, I took some assumption because we don't have all the data for a Starship. It can go at around eight kilometers per second, which is enough to come from Earth orbit, to moon orbit, to land on the moon and come back to 
to the gateway or to rendezvous with Orion. Just enough, barely, maybe with some uh, other uh, tweaking. But we are missing about 2.7 kilometers per second. Uh, we need the uh, 10.6 something instead of eight. And we don't have that. So what can we do? Some proposal. First of all, the Raptor 2 is has more thrust than the Raptor 1, which was the original design for, not the original device, but the original calculation or original data that they found on uh, Wikipedia for the Starship. So perhaps with the Raptor 2, because it's more powerful, it can launch a heavier Starship. A heavier Starship can carry more propellant. So maybe we can have, instead of the numbers that we had earlier, that is, uh, well, it is uh, 1,320 tons, maybe it could be 1,500, 1,600, I don't know. So, yeah. So we can have more propellant, bigger spacecraft, and maybe it can get to a higher delta V because it has more propellant. Then we can send uh, another option is uh, instead of sending uh, one starship to land on the moon by itself, I think that's the, the Artemis program anyway, we're going to first have a cargo starship landing on the moon before the mission. So we can add maybe another cargo or just have one extra cargo and that cargo, because it doesn't need to return from the moon surface to the orbit, it will have a little bit uh, propellant left. Plus, instead of cargo, which may be 100 or maybe 150 tons, you can have more propellant. So we'll have a rocket as one starship waiting with propellant on the moon. Then we have our starship with the astronaut landing on the moon. Then it can transfer whatever propellant the, the second starship has to the one that needs to return to Earth. So we have a slightly larger rocket and we have a little bit propellant waiting on the moon to be refueled. And then we can, another option, we can send another tanker instead of sending just a tanker to Earth orbit, we can put one tanker in Earth orbit, send a few more tankers to refuel it, and then send this extra tanker either to the moon, to the moon orbit, or to maybe a high Earth orbit, whatever starship need to get, maybe it cannot get to low Earth orbit to meet with the, is Dragon 2, but it can go to a higher orbit, maybe something like the Geosynchronous that needs a little bit less than 2.7 kilometer per second extra. Uh, and then it will meet the extra tanker. The tanker will refuel it. So the Starship will have enough fuel to come all the way to Earth orbit. And then on Earth orbit, it will have the boost with uh, the SpaceX Dragon 2, which will carry the astronaut back to Earth. So, the conclusion. SLS is very expensive per launch and it can only fly once per year. Additional missions can be designed with Starship HLS, Tankers, and Dragon 2. Components that are either already exist as or they are required for a successful Artemis program anyway. So we need to develop them anyway. So why not use these uh, components in order to send, instead of one mission to the moon per year, 10 mission or 20 mission and build a base. Those additional missions can be more frequent and at a lower cost. So why not do that? Thank you very much. If you want to support the channel, please don't forget uh, to click the like and say, subscribe to the channel. Here is you can find me on Twitter. I also have a blog that I write about uh, space. It has like something like 4.7 million views on Quera. Here is the link and also you can buy my books and do some other things to support the channel. Thank you very much and I hope to see you on the next time we'll have a video. Thank you very much.